everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Nichelle Anderson. I'm your host for my podcast show, Nichelle Anderson Short Stories and Beyond. Thank you so much for joining me again today in this particular episode, which is October the 21st, 2019, for bonus four of my future series of Nahara and Princess Amenia. So I'm fast forwarding this timeline a bit from where I started my podcast two years ago, and it was entitled Before the Time of Princess Amenia episode one for season one thank you so much for joining me today this right here is something very special to me in the sense that when I wrote my book this is based on my book my podcast show Mitch Rayam two decades ago wow the book was just coming from a recollection it was coming from I would say things that I could see but it wasn't written out or pre-planned in that nature and this past uh, spring Nahara was coming through to focus on that part of their lives before the kings, right? So the production of Mole is mostly the short stories and I like to go into this intro <laughs> for people that are just joining me. For those that already pretty much know this, what have you, you can stick around you and listen to it. But nevertheless, I like to kind of connect the dots before I start my short story. And it's mostly on Mole. Mole is my heart because that's what started this whole writing journey of mine and Mole is very spiritual because it was a spiritual part of of a journey that led to where I am now and so it is a production from the book which is Mole production the stage play was called Moments of Love in Ancient Egypt that turned into other theatrical type things it's all except a feature film I haven't did a feature film yet of it but the, right now the prestige return of Mole stage plays in the prep stage of returning back to stage when I get those announced get those one days I'll let you know so you can support it that way but this right here is this future series of Nahara and Princess Aminia I'm learning more things about it that about them when I wrote the book it was all of these things that I had to write out and I just the only way I could understand what they meant and how to connect the story is that it felt like in a sense my spirit like you had to sit down you had to type it out and I was able to go through and see certain characters so this whole podcast is a whole awakening and so I'm experiencing with you when you get to listen to it okay because that's when I'm actually understanding it and putting the pieces together so it's like I'm in the discovery mode as you are when you're discovering new things and understanding and listening to these stories these short stories and getting introduced to these characters so am I and it's just a wonderful experience particularly about Nahara because in my book Nahara and Princess Amelia was the first on the scene and that's if, if you ever created anything the first moment is always the memorable moment and of course throughout the story later on and through the play or what have you in the ripsos you know you find out Amenya and Nahar, do they end up together? Do they don't? And you see all these other people. But for right now, we're just focusing on their bond and their connection and how they became best friends. When the story started, they just were best friends, right? Long-time friends. And it was on the eve of her committing to the deal by her father, King Milan, which if you've been only starting following the podcast, is the one you hear a lot. And that's what basically was coming through. So I'm basically we recollection of these experiences live when I'm doing these sit down to record it of course after I know this is what I need to say this is the next this is the next short story and I'm just free forming it and then I record it I'm going through it you know it's like now it's an opening now like the vortex is opening and more of The things that didn't get to reveal to me when I wrote the book, Metroam, is being revealed now. I guess in my other podcast, Surviving Your Journey to a Success, time really is key. Some things are closed in our lives that we're not ready. Trust me, it was a lot when I wrote that book that it was so much coming through. And it holds off all the other things until a later time. And sometimes that could be five years. Sometimes that could be ten years. Sometimes that could be two decades. I don't know when. But I do know it does come up and it is ready to be released so you can be able to absorb it and handle it and use it in a way that can move you forward. And so it's just wonderful to write this. And I didn't really have plan to kind of say what I just said for the last couple of minutes. It just came through to connect 
hopefully you could take what I said can use that in your life or what have you or make you feel good today I don't know but that just came through for me to talk about that <laughs> that I'm enjoying this process especially this series Nahara because I'm learning it because I didn't know I just knew from the moment of that image of what I wrote out on that page chapter one page one is what I kept seeing them in their chariot together by then they're like 18 going on 18 now in this future series of Nahar is when before that time and they're young and now I'm understanding how Nahar is like wow he saw a connection or what have you he saw how he can bring things to her that not too many could or wasn't allowed and he was breaking all that or you know like I'm going to do it anyway and I just it's just a wonderful experience to write about so enough about that let's move on <laughs> so I covered a couple of things just to recap again I like to say is I have my cafe press shop it is one for Mole the website and for my podcast show here If you want to support it, go ahead and check out the merchandise. They have a 30-day return policy, Cafe Press. They have a customer service line. If you're not in the United States and you're outside the United States, guess what? You have access to purchase the merchandise and get it shipped to you if you're not living in the United States, right? And that helps to support the show, okay? brand is to help me to promote this wonderful podcast if you like it. And if you like it, you know what I'm going to say. You got to share it. Okay, and if you want to go ahead and join Spreaker and follow me or follow Mole Facebook page, go ahead and do that. Okay, get all up in it. Okay, stay connected. And I want to touch on the commercial ads. You know what I'm going to say. If you've been listening to the last few return of my return back to season three, 2019 to 2018, you go, you got to listen to the whole commercial. Okay, that helps the podcast. So go ahead and do that. I allow it to come on beginning and in the end for this podcast i do go ahead and let it play out we let it play out guess what i get credit for that okay and i appreciate it all right let's look at the highlights for today and this is again a special occasion i have stopped the timeline that i did before the time of princess amelia and now we are fast forwarding to when nahar and princess amelia has been born and this is their moment okay this is about nahar he gonna get some attention Okay, without competition with the two kings, because when they two get on the scene, King Damar and King Danielle, which I haven't did a character profile yet on them or Nahara, but I will, or Amelia, but I will. It's coming, on my podcast. It's gonna be some mess. You talking about some drama? Oh my goodness. Mm-mm-mm. That Damar, oh my goodness, that's a whole, that's a whole nother podcast. I'm not gonna get into that right now. But if you read my book and if you've been to one of my plays. When it was just those five, you already know what I'm talking about when we're talking about Damar. And Danielle ain't no joke either. So we're going to move forward. And we're going to focus on Nahar and Princess Amelia and how they're experiencing this moment. And how Nahar is coming into his fold as he know now. Not only he can hone Princess Amelia's attention, but that's why I feel that when I'm writing it, that he sees a way to her heart. I see a way that can maybe deter her future pre-planned path to marry a king which is Dama but Nahar has this moment has her attention and he's finding a way to do that and that's by bringing these things that is unheard of that you know most people can't get access to and this is just the beginning seeds of his influence connection so the recap from last week and that was called what we seek we shall receive so in that one is where he's showing her this horizon i guess it's a special particular location where you see the actual transition it's something that's unique and it shows off i guess a mirage perhaps something that offset or bounces off the tip of could say the pyramid or something like that or the horizon of the sand dunes and that's something that this gives her peace and connection um something that is different from the ordinary routine of royal protocol and Nahar found a perfect location to experience that and they just share that moment right after their schooling so go ahead and check that out that's bonus three so let's go ahead and get started with this bonus four So let's begin for this week on my podcast show for season three, 2019 to 2020, Nichelle Anderson Short Stories and Beyond for the future series featuring Naha and Princess Amelia Bonus 4 entitled One Path Does Lead to Another.
Opening scene. As the long trail of the royal retirates made their way through the main central square town of Mitrayam, the Apsu, as usual, allowed the air to breathe that much nicer than before. It was another gem of good tidings from Amnun. On this Apsu, inside one of the royal chariots, were Princess Amina and Naha. They were sitting next to each other, across along with Ezra, the high rank herbalist and scientist of Mitzrayam, and the father of Naha. There were over 30 assigned hectic guards in and around the royal chariots as the crowds of Mitzrayam came to the forefront to get a glimpse of the princess. Just a few moments, Princess Amina was allowed to stand in the open compartment made for viewing with two Mitzrayam guards. She waved as moments allowed by the hectic rule of Helic, that he immediately to her right was overseeing it all as instructed by King Milan and Queen Hagar. The young Princess Amina smiled as they made it through most of the thrusts of the town of Mitzrayam in Mitzrayam. They were glad to see her as they waved to her as she continued to move through the area. She surely enjoyed seeing her fellow Mitzrayim. When she returned to go inside the royal interred enclosure and the carriage with Naha and Ezra and Helic followed to sit next to Ezra as they continued onward to their destination now. When she sat next to Naha, Ezra started to talk to Hillock, and they went over a papyrus mouth filled with colors and stones. Princess Samina still could not contend how Nahar got her father, King Milan, and her mother, Queen Hagar, to agree that she could travel with them on this Apsu on a special ed attraction ordered by the king, her father. But she was so delighted that she had to continue to squeeze her hands for not showing her extra excitement feeling that Nahar promised to show her something anew when they arrived to the destination of the Vakuko Ata site. On this journey was the nearby territory wooed by King Malan as well, but overseen by the alliance with a fellow tribal ruler leader. In the intellectual and resourceful trade exposition, Ezra was instructed to oversee the extradition that was indicated by their own site herbless as they were not as under the high rank within the Thebes of Akun knowledge and authority as Ezra. Thus, it was Ezra that was commissioned to lead this journey with Hillek on the oversight protection by King Milan for his daughter, Princess Amina, was accompanying them for the experience that was also making the journey as well. They reached the destination, the usual protection of the guards' protocol to disembark and assemble accordingly occurred. Princess Amenia could not leave the royal Ateria until notified by Hillock because they had to make sure that the area was secured to the standards of their military rule, ordered by the king, King Milan. Ezra exited the Ateria and started to motion Nahar when then Nahar assured his father that he would stay inside with Princess Amenia. So it was then just the two of them with the Egyptian Mizraim guards directly outside the chariot, protecting and overseeing them inside. Nahar turned to Princess Samia as they was alone now and he handed her a rolled up papyrus that he kept in his side, a tall Atan case. Princess Samia spoke. What is this? Nahar responded. A pathway to the dunes of Osiris. She unrolled the papyrus as it had sparkles of diamond dust that flooded the air around them in the enclosed royal chariot as they could still hear the sounds of the Egyptian guards following the commands of Helic, instructing them into the royal formation as ordered as high up by the general comrade Tata, ordered by King Milan. So they knew they still had only a few moments before someone would open the chariot and instruct them to step outside and end their talk. 
Princess Amelia's eyes grew wider as she looked at the markings and touched each symbol as it had laid across the papyrus. She spoke with each word, still in his own moment of awe of what she was seeing before her. Where is it? As she looked up at him. Nahad spoke and looked up into her eyes. Under the sun, afar. She looked confused as she looked back down at the papyrus. And then she asked, Where did you get this? She's still gazing at the beautiful markings and lines to somewhere at the top of it. The heart spoke in a low voice. I cannot tell at this moment, looking at the papyrus as well. Princess Amelia spoke. What is this language? It looks as the heart spoke with care and caution as well. I say, Elder Tahib, your grandfather, has only taught us semantic of the first rain language. This, this is of the third rain of secrecy to the Akun. She merely dropped the papyrus holding the markings in shock and awe. She was so excited and a bit afraid, but she wanted to know more. So she said, Take me there. Nahar slowly smiled, for he knew a path to her heart. It was worth the risk to obtain such a papyrus of writing of a map. He picked up the papyrus and rolled it back up, looked back at her as he hid it in his side compartment to his little new Egyptian Mitzrayam wrap. And then he spoke, Arshe, I shall. Insane.